First time over at Optus Stadium this week, Brad. Looking forward to it? Yeah, I've got to go and do a bit of reconnaissance how to get back from the ground to the, the coach's box. Um, they're saying it's about three minutes, so for me it's probably going to take me five. So <laughs> I'll have to leave pretty early. No, we're looking forward to the... I mean, the stadium obviously looks unbelievable and um, been a bit of talk about the surface, but, you know, that doesn't... looks pretty good to me. Um, we're really looking forward to getting over there in, in front of hopefully what's a big crowd and, and you know, a great atmosphere that Optus Stadium provides. So no concerns with that surface? You wouldn't have thought of, say, resting Jacobs or Wright who've had the foot issues or, or Jared Wayne? No, no, well, that hasn't come into our consideration. I mean, the, the medical staff give their report. If they're fit to play the ground, hardness won't come into, a, into consideration, I wouldn't have thought. What have you made of Freo so far? Yeah, they've been a very effective side, particularly at home. Um, and, and look, they're in a, a bit of a, a state of transition with some of their young players. I mean, Adam Chera coming in, Andrew Brayshaw have been you know, top five selections and, and have played some really impressive footy for 18-year-olds. So they're, and then they've got their, you know, their old, older stages and um, veterans in, in Sandlands and, and Mundy who, and Johnson who are fantastic players. So their top end is still genuine A-grade and they've got some, some A-grade talent coming through. How do you deal with that five? Uh, with great difficulty is always the the, um, the way we go about it. I mean, he's a super player. I got a, f a really good first-hand look at him in the international rules at the end of last year, and he's back to his best footy. Um, you know, and that that probably comes on the back of a great preparation and and being physically fit. So uh, he's a super player, and and I suspect it's going to take a midfield effort to try and combat him. Jacob's an option there. Yeah, he's an option, but but it's um, Jacob's great strength this year. He's been able to to switch to whoever we need him to switch to in game. So he'll be prepared for a, a whole lot of scenarios there. And uh, Sandlands for Goldie in his 200th game, it's not uh, exactly a cakewalk <laughs> for him in the milestone game. Yeah, oh, he's, uh, he's still one of the great challenges for, for all Ruckman. Um, Sandlands has been a great player over a, a long period of time and I think he, he probably sits in the top four for all time number of hit outs. And you know, Goldie I think is fourth on that list. So, you know, in his 200th game to be, to be you know, I think he is fourth in, in all-time hit-outs. is um, an incredible achievement. Goldie's been a, a great player over a long period of time, and, and so is Sanderland, so it shapes as a great jewel. He's, he's back sort of to where he has been in the past after a sort of an awkward couple of years for him. Oh, yeah, he's, um, we, we were really confident in the pre-season that, that on the back of the preparation he had and, and you know, he'd been able to work through a, a, a few issues that he had that, that he's... Uh, he was going to be able to regain his form of the past, and yeah, he's had some some really influential games for us this year, where uh, our midfield's been able to get on top based on his dominance. So, um, and clearly with Sanderlands, it presents a different challenge. But um, but Goldie's performed pretty well against him in the past. I know a lot of it at the start of the season, Brad, was external noise. But has your impressive form recently forced you to realign your expectations starting this season? Yeah, we don't we don't have any expectations. I mean, we don't make predictions. Um, We've, we've never said we're going to finish here or there. Uh, we just focus on what we're trying to do and, and trying to win every game we play. So, you know, we, there's no point in us getting to round 9 or 10 or 11 and saying we're, we're going to change our prediction as to where we're going to finish. I mean, I get asked about it a lot, um, but we just don't do that. That's what you guys do. Ranked number one for points against so far. Has anything changed team defence-wise or what's working for you at the moment? Yeah, oh, it's been, look, it's been an evolution rather than a revolution. No, nothing's really, um, we haven't thrown everything out and started again. We've just evolved the way we play. And you know, certainly getting some personnel back, um, having good continuity helps. Um, you know, the addition of Majak Dor into defence has really helped. But, but also, the, I think the addition of Ben Mackay and, and Sam Durden, who are playing great footy at VFL level as key defenders, have meant that we've been able to train it really strongly on the track, not just with our senior 22, but with our whole list. Are those, either of those boys close to a call up? It must be, I imagine, hard for them playing good footy in the VFL and you know, being behind uh, Tarrant and Thompson. Yeah, it is, but their, their attitude's been absolutely superb. They, they continue to get better in the VFL, um, so they're showing no, no signs of the frustration, even though it, it would obviously be there because their form's been good, but it, it hasn't translated into the senior selection, but that's only a matter of time, I suspect. How's, How's Kyron Hayden going at the level? Yeah, well, he's had a, a shoulder reconstruction um, at the start of the year, so uh, it's been a, a slow introduction, but, um, but I tell you what, every, um, every opposition player know, know Kyron Hayden's around. He's, um, he's a fierce competitor, um, and he's, he's as 
hard and as powerful as an 18 year old as I've seen in a very long time. So yeah, we're looking forward to get a, getting a bit more footy into him, but, um, but it's going to take a little while just on the back of the fact that he's in his first year and he's coming off a shoulder Rico. Possible debut in the back half of the season? Right? Yeah, that, that would be speculation at this point, but he's, um, that's, I mean, he, he would like to play senior footy, but his focus is on the moment, just, just getting you know, all the aspects of his footy that we need him to get right. And uh, he's like any young player, they've got so much to focus on. And if they get all that right, then senior selection will follow. Fred, uh, Michael, you focused on Frio, but there has been a lot of discussion this week, including from the club, about Jordan Begoe. How would you rate your level of interest in perhaps having a crack at him? Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> you guys speculate and continue to speculate and, and, and speculate some more. Just make sure that speculation doesn't turn into fact or apparent fact, because speculation is being reported as fact at the moment. But uh, what are we, round 10? So I'm not going to engage in a running commentary on players from opposition clubs. I suspect it won't be the last time I say that. Sandlands can be really dominant in their hit outs, Brad, probably a bit like Max Gorn. What, what sort of approach does Goldie have to take this week? Is it, is it just try and run him off his legs around the ground? Yeah, I, just, I think play to his strengths and, tr and try and nullify Sandlands. Um, you know, that, but I think that, you know, look at the Richmond game, Sandlands was unbelievable in that game and, and Fife was unbelievable. You know, but, but Richmond's midfield was, was able to limit the damage from stoppages and they are able to score the other way. So. There are so many elements to the game I and mean, you want to win everything, but you know, we've just got to look at the, at the game on balance and, and make sure that we can, we can defend what potentially for them could be hit out dominance as it was for Fremantle against Richmond, but back Goldie in too and, and try and get him to get his hand to the ball. Any likely changes this week? Um, not other than the guys that you've, you've mentioned. I mean, the, we've got some, you know, the, the two key backs, Mackay and Durden, Luke Davies Uniac had a really good game. Um, Taylor Garner's right in the mix, so you know we've got to be careful about his transition back into senior footy. But you know, Nathan Rovat's been playing great footy, so there's there's um, on the back of really good availability, um, we've got some options. Hard hitting one, sorry, left field one for our news team. Uh, Eddie had renamed take Marvel's. responsibility. <laughs> okay, it's me. I'll take it. I'll cop it. I'll cop it. What do you think of the renaming of Eddie had Marvel Stadium? It's on me. Uh, well, I assume it's a um, pretty good deal for the AFL um, and those good deals flow through the game, don't they? All the way through the grass, grassroots level and, and, and supporting grassroots footy, not only in, in Victoria, but also in, in another region that's really important for us down in Tasmania. So, you know, any, any, any um, revenue that the game can bring in is a good thing for grassroots footy. So, and call it what they like. Marvel's a good name, though. Yeah. <laughs>